All right, so Salisbury Hill by Peter Gabriel. This is off his debut solo album uh, way back in 1977. And it's such an awesome song. I really love this song. It's one of those songs that no matter how many times you hear it, it always sounds brand new. And um, if you click that I up there, the link in the description box or the first pinned comment, it'll take you to my website. And I always do a little write-up on these songs as well as if there's multiple videos, uh, they're all on the same page. It's really the best place to kind of take in all of my content. Anyways, uh, I'll leave a link to an article there by Steve Hunter, because Steve Hunter is the guitar player who played this guitar part. And he is sort of famous for working with Alice Cooper and Lou Reed. And also the producer of this album, and of course this song was Bob Ezrin, um, another guy sort of associated with Alice Cooper. Um, anyways, it's a great article, and he explains how Bob Ezrin came to him and Peter Gabriel and, and basically told him that it was a piano-based song, but his idea was to do it with a modified Travis pick. But the only problem is it was in 7-4, but not only was it in 7-4, the first part was like a bar of 3-4 and a bar of 4-4, four, four, and the second part was a bar of 4-4 four, four, followed by a bar of 3-4. <laughs> anyways, read the article. It's really, it's kind of funny, actually. Um, you know, these kind of guys, this is why they're so in demand. You know, they can walk into a situation like that and come up with this part, um, you know, the same day kind of thing. And that always blows me away. Because this, to me, I consider this like a genius type part for a guitar player. Anyways, I'm going to try and break it down as best I can. It's quite complicated, right? So you got to hang in there with me. And I'll also have a tab for this. And I think a tab for a song like this might really help a lot of people. Anyway, so we're in the key of B. We got the capo on the second fret. It's standard tuning, but we're playing in A shapes. Okay, and we'll just go over the chords. So we'll... we've got that chord there, which is like a D over an A, and an A, and then this is like an E chord, but over an A bass. And that kind of cycles through. Um, there's a lot of the song is just that, that, and of course this too. That's the D over the A, but you've got that E, so it's like an add nine, a D add nine over A. And if your finger bends like mine does, you know, you can just, that's great, you know, you can get that. No problem. And then later on, we've got an F sharp minor like that, and an E. And then we've got a D major seven, and then that's a D major seven, or a, sorry, an E major over D. And then, right? And then to end it, we've got this, it's kind of like a B minor seven, but with the four, so I guess it would be B minor 11. It's just a bar on the second fret with your um, second finger on D three. And then we've got, that's an A with a third in the bass. And then we've got an E sus4 to an E, and then we're back to the top, okay? But it's the picking, and it's the picking in 7-4 that's going to be the trick for most people. Okay, so we're going to start out like this. That's just G1, G2, G4. We're gonna hammer this next bit on. Okay, so we've got that D over an A, and we're gonna fingers are gonna go the G string and the, and the B string. And I might as well get into this now, but the whole thing is Travis picked. So, right, and it's mostly all between the A string and the D string, although that that changes up on the on the um, D major seven. So, right, that would be what the thumb is doing there, like in that part. into your head and then add your fingers later. That's the way I like to approach finger picking. And the finger
fingers. Or that second one is not hammered. So that first figure is different than the rest. Right, it's hammered. And that second figure adds that open E string. Okay, so I think rather than over explaining it, uh, I think it's better if I just play it slow. Okay, so. And that just repeats. Um, over and over it, but the only time we hammer it and don't go to that opening is the first time, right? So up to speed. And of course the timing on that, this is where it's 7-4, but it's a bar 3-4 and a bar 4-4. Four, four. So we start on um, and 4 and, so 3, and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and, it's hard to count and sing. But my advice, and don't count, you know, just get the patterns. Like the pattern is pretty easy to get. If, as long as you know it's coming in on and, and four and. And four and. Da 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 right just get the pattern rather than count so now the singing starts and we're going to go coming out of this stops. And that's followed by... And that pattern is consistent in all of the verse. Okay, so that's another pattern you got to lock your head into. Um, This is the part that Bob Ezrin was thinking a bar 4-4 four, four, and a bar 3-4. So, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. 1 and 2 and 3 and 1. Right? Okay, so now the next figure is... Right, super cool. So we're gonna go three fingers, G, B, and E, and keep the Travis going. And you know, you're starting. You're not like when you're used to Travis picking. You're always thinking about starting on the root, root five, root five, right? But this is five root, five root, right? A four, D four. So in the three fingers, take down to that E chord and just play it like that because you can just you know you don't have to. Do this and this, all this movement, just like so. And 
and then he hits the open either. It's not. It's. Right? This is tricky. That's what your thumb would do. your fingers. So, while well, we keep that going, right? Again. Back to the F sharp. Now we go to the D major seven and we're gonna move the thumb up, right? So instead of going like that, we're gonna go D string, G string. Got that E over a D. Real slow. And right, same rhythms. This is twice, and now we do this. Right? So we're going to that F sharp E but landing on the D major 7. Remember that open E. Now we're going to finish up the cycle with two bars of 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> Just to kind of, you know, screw you up even more. So that's... So we're getting the low E and the low F sharp. One, two, and three, and four. Two, and three, and four. Now we've got another bar of four, four, and we're going to play these chords. This is this B, B minor 11. And then A with a third in the bass. And then E sus4. Just the E or the D, G, and B string. E. Same thing. D, G, and B. And then we're back to the beginning. Okay. Super cool, right? So from here, the last D major 7. back to the top and that is it for this song uh, there's a lot to it right um, and to think that he just kind of worked that out in the control room with Bob Ezra and, and Peter Gabriel just working this part out and you know that's amazing to me like, like it took me two weeks to even figure this part out and be able to play it properly so you know these guys are next level musicians right that's why they're so in demand anyways let's let's go through pretty well the whole thing but a little slower one Two, three, and four, and... Let's go to the verse. F sharp. 
so that's it for this one. Uh, phenomenal song, fantastic, um, you know, next level uh, guitar playing by Steve Hunter on this song. Really, really good. Anyways, it'll take a bit of time for you to work this out. Like playing in 7-4 can really, um, you know, it's all in your mind, right? Don't, don't count. That's my advice. Just don't count. Just get the patterns and play the patterns and uh, you'll be fine. Okay, I hope you get something out of this lesson. I uh, really hope you enjoy playing this awesome song. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.